Morning. Just turned up at McDonald's down in Bridgewater, waiting for the boys to turn up today for the match. Uh, it's my dirty league match, which I have one a month. It's mid-November. It's 13 and a half degrees at six o'clock when I left the house this morning, which is absolutely unbelievable for this time of year. So that hopefully will stand us in good stead of catching a few bream. Uh, that's my approach today is pick off bream where and when I can. I'm not going to go heavy with a bait. Just going to keep trickle feeding a bit of bait in for them at range and see what we can pick up. But for now, I'm just going to pop in and have my breakfast and we'll catch you when we get up the reservoir. See you in a bit. We're on the lake now guys, I'm just going to show you a little bit about the place really, very easy to get to, uh, 10 minutes off the motorway, junction 23 on the M5, got a lovely little car park, just down the bottom here, we've got a little bit of a hill you can walk up but if you're less able, like a couple of boys now, they park at the top here, look, unload their gear, drop it where we draw just by the lodge there, and then they'll drop their van back down there. But I'm uh, just going to tell you a bit about the, the res itself. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm, this is what I think. I think it's 80 acres, as you can see. This is a dam head, where the deep water is up to 25 foot on full water. And right up then, our very far end at the top, I see that top third, the top two fifths of the reservoir is unfishable. Um, there's no pegs at the top end, so they sort of run about 500 meters up either side of the banks. Now that bank over the other side of the dam, you see you've got a lovely tarmac path here, recently put in. Gets over to the other side and then you've got a bit across some grass. We've got pegs 11 through to, I think it's 16 or 18 over the other side and they call that um, over on the lawns. And this side is a lodge bank. So again, we walk across a well-walked path past that Christmas tree, uh, you've got peg one just by there, and up around that corner you've got pegs uh, one through to ten. But where we want to be today is where you can see this slack water really. If we can get anywhere close to this end we'll be uh, going for a good shout of some bream. Anything further up towards the top we're going to be edging our bets trying to catch a couple of whipfish if they're still about because it is mild, if not we're going to have to sit out for bream but I am going to scale my hooks and stuff down today just in case this skimmer's about. Just, you know, let's not miss bites if it's going to be hard fishing. So let's get some smaller hooks on and catch what's in our swim. So that's Dooley Reservoir. We're going to go and draw now and then um, get to our peg and we'll go through what we're going to do to attack our peg when we get to it. Cheers. Yeah. Stand up, Carl. I, I am, I am, I am. Yeah, I've enjoyed the conversation. Is that yours, Giff? I've enjoyed that. Yeah. Have you already? Is that you drawn already? No, that's uh. Are you having a practice this way? What's going on there? You've got some new wellies. What's that the old one? Yeah, I'm going to draw for Cole's dad. Oh, okay. Because he's gone back to get his battery, and we've left all the pegs in. That's going to take a good draw away, man. You know that, don't you? So, well, let me let me see what his dad says. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Fifteen for John. Fifteen. Oh, that's your bad draw. Go on, then. Yeah, it's your bad draw. Fifteen miles away. Poor John. That's not mine. Right, That's the bad look, one gone. Right, so once you've drawn, <coughs> balls back in the bag. <laughs> Falls right back in the bag oh. and write your name on the peg that you're on. Come on, Chris. Be nice with it. Ten o'clock till three o'clock. We're going to wait for um, this now, or what? Yeah, he'll be on. He's coming back now. All right. All right, crack on him. Go on, then, boys. Fair Good luck. Yeah, Go on, then. Hey? I don't, I don't like it. I don't like going. I've been in for practice, so I have four. <laughs> yeah, I had a practical win there. That's packed out as well. <laughs> the chicken fell. Don't let him go underneath. Oh, I'll do me. Oh, yeah. no, 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 no,
John, Lucy, you not you you have to edit that. John, Lucy, not in crappy well, well, I'll tell you so what. So, what difference is it, Matt? We don't know where you want to be. Because I don't like being right at the back, that's why. What do you have, John, bye? Five. Oh, well done, mate. I'm happy with that. That's on the. That's on the. It's on the spot. You drawn three, Captain. God, I want to talk about Trey. Oh, no, you're not. What's that, Trey? Yeah. Oh, uh, it's good to be, yeah, it's good to be here, mate. Oh, mate. Oh, 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 yeah. oh, 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 no, you're just in on the end of the lawn, point tree. Oh, you're where I am, aren't you? Oh, flyer. Six. Fourteen. About freaking time, innit? I'm moaning, mate. What have you got? Six. Are you drawing out here? Eighteen. Eighteen. Come on, then. I'm in the bag. I can't reach, man. Oh, yeah, it's oh, oh no. What have you got? Oh no. <laughs> no. <laughs> I got the dash. Oh, what have you got, Dave? Not good, mate. Not good as well. A bit sticky off the boys down the bank. It's going to be quiet in a minute. Come on, mate. Down, Right, that's the bait up rod wrapped up. Just a three pound test curve rod, big reel, 15 pound shot leader, and 70 gram big cage. Um, today I'm gonna to do exactly the same as in the last match, every hour, and I put four or five, six in on the hour. Um, obviously if I can see his fishing a bit different, I'll change it, um, but ring the bell constantly every hour. But this rod, so all my rods, rods, my method rod and my feeder rod, normal conventional feeder rod are wrapped up at 19 wraps. Um, but what I've done with this one, I've wrapped it at 19, but then I've added two meters on. And the reason for that is, when that goes in, there's no way all that bait, when you strike, is coming out there. So if, you, if I wrap that at exactly 19, the same as the rods I'm going to fish with, what you're going to find is you're going to put all, pull all the bait, when you start striking it out, all the bait in front of your peg. And you get liners and stuff like that. So I've put that two meters behind the back of where I'm going to be fishing in the thought that I'm going to be striking it out into the swim that I'm going to be on to fish. That's a nice little tip for you there. Um, obviously, if you leave it in the water for like two minutes and then lift it out, it's, it's going to disperse pretty quickly. But that sort of quick bait, frantic bait up you do, where you strike it out, it always pulls the bait out towards you. So just a quick little tip there. Um, I've got an ounce and a half tip in um, 13 and a half foot rod. Uh, I've got, normally I'd have fished three ounce tips on you because you're fishing at range. Um, but with a method, you, you know, your bites are either on or they're off, you know, there's, there's no worry, you don't need to read the tip too much. But I'm going to be fishing dead reds a lot today on a one rod, so I put an ounce and a half in just in case I am getting little indications I can strike at. Um, it's going to sort of, I wouldn't say slow my casting down, but you can get a bit, you can get the odd frap up using lighter tips and big rods. Um, but it's not too light, ounce and a half, it's the tournament tips, so... Um, you know that that should be fine for the day but definitely got to try and read the bites today this section last i 
think last month, even it was warmer, more colour in it, I think it was one with about two kilo, and it was a kilo off my peg. So it's a different day to day, wind similar, uh, but there's a lot of water come on here. It's got four foot on, and I've already sort of mixed a bit of ground bit of stuff up, and the water's cold for compared to what it was. So we are getting temperatures drop a little at night at times, I think, dropping the water temperature. We'll get on a box and um, talk through a few other bits, but that's me sticking up, ready for the big one. Cheers, boys. Right, let's run you through my approach for today. First of all, as you've seen, I've drawn, drawn peg 16, which is up the shallow end. I've got a count of three 76 meters, so that gives you an indication of how shallow it is. Um, I think I got a, not, not far off the same depth, close in. Um, my plan of attack today is feed regular, keep the bait going in. Smaller hooks, um, I've got uh, 14s, really sharp 14s on there. Um, 017 line, cage feeder. One rod is a heli rig set up with just two little float stops here, side by side with a little gap and a quick change bead. And that's as simple as that. And the reason I'm using a heli rig is because if that wind picks up at all into my face or slightly across me, in, you know, anything at you, um, you can, if it's a running rig, the hook can jump up over the top and tangle you up. So that's why I'm using a heli rig today. And then I've got a rod clipped up exactly the same range then for a method, which again, I'm going down to size 16s and four mil wafters on that, because any fish that's out there, I don't want to be uh, limiting my options with using big hooks and big baits. And I've got a feeding rod, which I've gone on to, a uh, carp rod, and then I've got a nice, five meter nano flex flick tip whip, uh, whip there and that i got a heavy rig three gram which some must say you know that's really heavy but going off my past couple of times visiting and fishing the whip here there's a lot of these little tiny fish up in the water that sort of intercept the bait all the time so i've got a three gram rig on you to try it with a big olivet look two and a half gram olivet just to bomb it through them first sort of four foot of water and then just fish in the last 18 inches of water then for the bigger fish, hopefully. So that's the plan. Whether or not the whip will kick off, I don't know, because it is mid-November, and any reservoir sort of has this day where the roach fishing is good, but generally by October, end of October, the roach sort of disperse and they've gone and you won't see them to the following season. So, you know, tough area, but we'll give it a go. Just wait for the all-in now. Uh, I know everybody likes to see what you got on your side tray, so talk through what I got. I've got a very strong fish meal mix today. I've got the Census Gold Green. Uh, it's a crazy big green, sorry. Um, as you can see, but what I've done with that is I've actually sieved it to get all the slightly bigger particles out, so I've got a nice fluffy mix. Um, it's not that I don't think the fish are gonna want a lot of bait, but we never know now if the temperatures are dropping. So well, I, my base mix is actually a very strong fish meal, but not full of f food that could potentially feed the fish up. So that means I can add or, or remove as much bait as I want going through the session. So for example, if I want to stack a load of dead red maggots through it, I can do that. If I think I need to cut a bait back a lot, I can go straight back to the neat gram bait and put pellet in uh, and ask that. And I've got some, um, some of our power green sticky micro there as well. That's just got a bit of fishery micro mixed in with it as well, just to give a little contrast of a couple of different colors. And a couple of four mil pellet as well. Census feed pellet, that they're just on the side of my ground bait if I wanted to introduce my will. I got caster and a little catapult, fish five meters for, um, for roach. And then I've got a roach mix in, which is uh, 3000 noir black and 3000 roach. Um, Together, they smell really chocolatey. It's a very sort of biscuity, hemp type mix. However, I mixed it up last night and I've really wet it down. Um, I want the attractors of the oil or the hemp stuff, but if I go on a whip, I want to catch decent fish today. There's a little bit of color. Um, I've had the last two matches here and I've been bitted out. So I'm trying everything today, as you see in my rig, trying everything to avoid these little tiny fish and get through the better ones. So I've got a heavy, Heavy mix with a bit of lime in it as well. Um, I've only got five foot of water, but I just want to pin everything down. And then I'm not going to put loads in. I put four or five balls at the start, let it rest, and then constantly feed it with caster then when I'm waiting for bites on the tip. And then um, 
I can watch what's going on around me and I can judge to see if I've got to come on a whip line or not or if I can in fact gamble and stay out on the feeder line. Got to see what happens in the match. Got a tin of corn and then I've just got um, lots of variants of wafters, small ones. Um, mainly I've got sort of fours and fives on the side tree because I want to catch skimmers or anything really on that long line. I don't want to be sat out there and think that there might be the odd skimmer in a swim and no bream and I'm just sat there on an eight mil with a size 10 hook on and not being able to really get see the bites or you know get bites off of the bit the smaller skimmers are in the swim I want to catch them so with smaller hooks smaller baits still long range but I think you have to go out long to get these fish um, and then we've got that close line as well just in case there's a backup line but whether or not it goes we don't know yet we'll see how it goes Again, I think about a pound and a half. Take your time. Not you've got anything happening at the bank yet. Lovely surroundings here. There's like some sort of old manor farmhouse estate on the left. And on the right, there's a, um, like a, something you see in America, like a plantation. An open garden that you walk through and cross to if you're on the other on the far bank. Yeah. Old John Turner in the next door. Nice guy to be next to. Nice to have a chat. Don't think he thinks I'm filming at the minute. Lovely blow. Yes, yeah. Carl Turner's dad, and I think. You, how many times have you beat Carl up here, John? One. Yeah? Did you, did you beat him in the last match? Yeah. Yeah, I hope so. No? Never. Was it? Yeah, again, small luxury. Not really. Nope. Keep quiet, John. I've had two now. Yeah. Far, we're doing all right then. We've had two skimmers to probably five pounds, two roach to half a pound. So we've got five, about five to five and a half pounds at the moment, I expect. And this pig. Dead reds. <laughs> no, on the dead reds, mate. Sorry? On the reds. Oh, no. I'm gonna forget this. Um, this line. Got ten minutes until that hour. Now it's just gone again.
looks back there, right? Well, 10 minutes now until that hour. Where I said that I'll refeed, but that was only, only if you're not catching, you know? So I'm catching a few now, so I'm fish it out. I'm not gonna go and bomb six over the top of them with a big heavy feeder. Keep fishing. If it drops off, I'll feed. But once I'm getting bites, I'm just gonna keep plodding away. And I'll load of slime up my line there. So that I'm on the line now, last chap was uh was ragged up by a roach I think. Don't mind getting bites off them roach. If I've got a real roach in from out there every time I take it. I'm not gonna compete with the green packs down the bottom. We're winning section. the same hole. If you think you've had a cast that's miles off where the target's going to be, just stop it mid-air, feather it out mid-air, let it drop in 40 metres or something. Don't, you know, and they're not spreading your bait around so much there. Eh? Still in. Line. So we're doing alright so far, but one of these big breams, I'm gonna catch you back up. Like a style of fishing, no, it's not really fast fishing, so you can have a cup of, a cup of coffee or tea. Right, uh, that's gone in at 49. So far, I've come within a minute. I'm leaving it longer than three minutes, I think it's a bit criminal. If they're coming quick, sometimes that means that they just sat off the bottom and they come down and have it as they see it, you know? Don't think there's a gazillion fish in my swim, I think it's just odd fish about. We're fishing for fish at a time. I said to the boys before match, if I can get two skimmers and two bream down here, I think that's, that'd be good going. So we've had two good skimmers. Just need a two bream now in the next, um, what time are we, 11? We've got another four hours, so. Good day ticket on you. Yeah? Ten pound a day online, or nine pound a day. Sorry, go online. Just type in Durley into your search, Durley tickets into your search bar, and it'll come up. I think it's um, Wessex Water is actual site. They've got a fishing part on their page. Go on there, and you book in advance. There's 16 pegs, so it's, uh, sometimes it's difficult to get on. It's dawn till dusk. Um, so we'll lock you in if you're late. But carp has come on you exactly the same, they do until dusk. So all the fish are feeding in the day because that's the only time the bait's going in. So that's a bonus. That's why I think sometimes the bream fish is really good because they don't feed nocturnally as much because boys are coming in the morning with their carp spod mix. So spod it out and they'll wait till the death then to try and get a bite in the last hours of, of the daylight. And then that's it, they won't put bait in then. So, you know, a lot of these fish are going to feed in the day. Me back then. Three minutes. Using a 60 gram feeder today, out with the range, and also when you've got a bit of side wind, I could get a 45 there, but what happens is you can't really straighten the bow or line up, so you're going to go in at different ranges all the time. 
big old 60 gram on there. It does go in with a bit of thud, but as long as you hit the clip, it's a lot better than that. Check the nuggets up. again. And a bit more four mils in my mix and a bit of pellet I think I've know some skims about. Nothing wrong with going in and out missing bite of a roach or you know because you're just constantly ringing the bell. So I don't see anything wrong with that in the winter. A little, um, a little run of bites, sort of between first 30 minutes and 55 minutes of the match. An hour, hour and 10 in, but I've had the last four casts without any indications. So I'm giving this now my last cast, and I'm going to put a little cream. I'm going to put four in over the top with a baked up rod. Similar size feeder to what I got on there, just a big cage, 70 grammer. Um, as you won't, I can't get one of them big coke cans out that far. Uh, I think sort of 60, 60 meters is probably a max I can fish with them big coke cans. Um, I'm not looking, oh, a little indication there. I'm not looking for loads of bait really, it's more than noise. So, just add an indication there. We'll see what develops. If I get a fish now, I'll have another chuck. I think that it's gone a bit stale, which I think I'll have. I'm going to refeed after my coffee. Two minutes to drink it. Still checking in a bit of cash, do I? I'm going to do that all match. I'm not going to see indications on my line. I'm not going to get rope swirling or anything like that. It's just going to be the case of. Like for instance, what I'll do now is if I bait this up, I won't leave it up for too long, but I'll have one quick chuck on the whip, two chucks maybe, just to see if we get a bite. Well, if somehow them big sort of winter roach want to have a feed, we do a weight of them. I know to my left, I don't think they've caught them, near them shouting or screaming. John on my right, I haven't had anything yet. I've not heard anything come up the bank either. Normally the phones are ringing and the boys are saying what we caught. But we are only an hour in, so. Well, that bite did develop in the end, and I've just put another uh, hang on a quarter skimmer in the net. So I. Probably up about six and a half pounds now. It's more than I thought I'd need catch off here. So we're going well. I haven't refed. Yes, it has dried up a bit and the bite's got a bit slower, but I'm not going to feed straight over the top of the fish I've just had. Just going to see what's happening. What I'll probably do now is if, if I don't get a bite this chuck, you know, I'll have another chuck. If I don't get a bite then, then I'll refeed because I know that this has gone, you know, over that period half an hour, just having one bite maybe. It's slowed up so it's worth refeeding now. Not working out so far. Right, the swim has gone quiet. Since I uh, bust off earlier and took a while, sort of 10 minutes, set back up and only threw the method over it. Um, struggle for indications, I've had seven or eight casts now, three minute casts. And they're not getting any indications. I've had, I did have one roach on the drop. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add two meters on, just in case it backed off. You never know. I just want to sit out a bit. 
There has been a grebe out there and a little look on the swim. So they could very well just be a couple of metres behind the back, so that's the next move, I think. Always come back, can't you? But um, it's worth it. I'll have two chucks a little bit longer and see if that results in any bites. Here we go then, guys. I had to work hard for this bite. It went quiet. So I put six really loose cage feeders in. Thinking, why am I not getting bites? You know, there's fish one in to feed. Put six really loose ones in, put them back into the swim. And then I went straight on to a, a metre long up length from my 60s that I was fishing. Just in case it was roached then on that loose bait. The second chuck after. First chuck I've gone out, I've had an indication, wound in, no, nothing on the hook. And that's gone in, Stuart, my man, he's just come up for a wandering, Stuart. <laughs> come up for a little look about. It's deaf down where he is, I think. Just got to take our time, we are on that small up. This feels like another one of them two pounders. Perch. Two pound perch. <laughs> Jacket, isn't it? Every fish today is crucial. crucial. I've been netting the roach. They've been three ounces, you know, and you're on that every big rod you'd swing them normally, but I know how hard this place has been fishing. But what a lot of people do is switch off, give up. But at times, though, in fairness to people, there is nothing you can do on waters like this. I'll put the back line down now, just in case it decides it wants to lunge under the net or something. Rumour has it, Giff has about seven pound of bream above me, two fish he seems to think. So something like this, stand me in good stead to get back out in front. There's a long way out that fish, but we've got him in close now. So with the shot leader not going. Was that a good one? Look at that. That's a proper four pound that day. Look at all that. Huh? by me, sis. The snared one, yeah. Four pounder. No. He's the, he's the boy, isn't he? Well, squeeze it. Right, the boy's having a tantrum at the bank, the sound of it. <laughs> right, I'm going to go and put six feet of fuzzy. Yeah. Away. Giving Stu a bit of uh, insight on how to catch them. Oh, go back and catch them, Stu. Don't, don't tell him nothing, Stu. Um, little indication, to be honest, John. I want a big pull. No, a couple of little indications, a slight drop back, and I picked it up and it's been on. No, three dead reds, mate. Three dead reds there. Uh. Yeah, that's a bait, mate. Right. Gonna concentrate now, try and catch another one. Right, second cast after that last one now. Third cast, sorry, it's gone round. I had indication last chuck, little line there. Two minute casting. Stu's just gone back to his peg with a bit of advice to try and uh, chuck a few out and catch one. You're never out of it, yeah? You can get four fish in a row and them four fish could go 20 pounds. Well, I'm not on 20 pounds. 
Now big this is, I guess it's probably going to be a pound and a half, two pound fish. So I've got about 12 pounds at the moment. Working tomorrow, John, yeah. Not gonna pull too hard. So when you're in baggy mode and you're catching a bream every shot you can you can crank them, can't you? But when you don't know if you're gonna go back out and catch another one, take the time, that's two and a half pounds. Sad one, John, yeah. About two and a half pound, mate. Now we're on 15 left to go. We've had seven now. I've just had three fish in a row. So that feeding went from no bites to pulling them into the swim. I've had We had nine pound in free casts. On a tough day, that's really good for me. I haven't got a clue what's going on further down on the bank, but I guess I'm winning the section comfortably at the moment, but it literally someone has two good fish, you back you know, you're back out the race. Just keep these fish going. One thing I'll say is the wind has dropped a bit and seems to be going down the same hole, exactly the same hole, a lot more regular now compared to when it was gusting earlier. It's probably only, I'd have the odd one where I'd miss by like what you'd think from here might be a metre or two. Um, but when you see a few go down the same hole, I think, you know, that also helps a hell of a lot. We're quite shy of these bites, they're not pulling the rod in. Just almost what you would think would be a liner. Little poles. I've sacked the roach line off now. I've gone on it um, four times now without a bite, so I've stopped feeding that because it's going to concentrate on the last hour and a bit now. But there's going to have a two or three fish in the last hour or so. That'd be really good. Is that an indication now? A lot of toe, so this ounce and a half tip is going around tight, quite tight. So now I've got 50 minutes left. Um, I think I'm quite far out in front, but you never know. So now is not the time to take your foot off the gas. So I'm going to put um, my, my bites. The last three chucks I haven't had a bite. Um, and this is my last chuck and I'm going to put another four out with a baked up feeder and now many might think oh you know it's last hour just sit and wait for a bream to come along but I found on you you've got to make them come along you cannot just sit and wait I think in the summer when they're moving around a lot and you spot a load out with a spod and you put half a bucket out yeah that's the case but I think when you just sat on four or five cage feeders that you've already chucked in in sort of hour and a half you've got no chance of them fish coming into swim or very little anyway. So I'm a firm believer in ringing a bell and it's worked again so far today. So for 50 minutes, this is my last chuck and I'm gonna get the bait up rod out again and put three or four in, make a bit of noise. Um, and you've got to think, it's not gonna spook them because they're not in a swim. But they could be within two or three meters of swim, you never know, so ringing that bell, pull them in. If I can snare another one or two before the end of the match, um, Hopefully you'll get me the job done. I'm winning the section at the moment, which is what it's all about. I'm in the league, but I've missed two 
matches. One is a drop, but the other one I've had um, maximum points, six points. So I really got to sort of win the section and the match because you need to have the most weight just in case I can creep up the next month in the last match. I don't want to sort of be beat on count back on weight, so fishing both section and match every time I've come. So you can rush this reeling in, you know, reeling as fast as you want. But when it comes to the cast, don't, don't go rushing it because you want it all to go down in the same area. If you want to now at this time of the match, spray it left, spray it right. Well, I'm just going to try and get one more fish before the end of the match. I'll take my time, put it all down the same way. Same way again. And remember, this rod is two metres past my fishing rod. When you pull that feeder, you're definitely pulling it back a metre or two and all that bait is going to disperse towards you. It's never going past you. Just trying to create a cloud and then fish back in. Last one, that's four in then. Got a um, finger stall on. It's using a big rod, a carp rod. You know, mono. If you're using braid, you definitely need one on if you're casting. But I find that the load and the pressure comes on your finger with a finger stall. I find that it just a bit easier to use the rod when you want to give it a good whack. It makes life easier for the sake of four or five quid rather than these are. Shoot back over to my cage. Give that a go. Five minutes left now, guys. Probably my last chuck, I expect. I'll leave it in, see if I can just snare one at the end. It's been a good day, really. Worked, uh, worked it out. Now, these fish are not sort of coming into your peg and staying. You've got to feed them and, you, you know, you've got to attract them back in and moving out. They're not sort of just sitting behind the back of your bait either. I think they're sort of cruising around, um, being a bit iffy, really. So I've managed to snare a few. I think I've had eight, I call them big skimmers to proper bream, really. My biggest is probably four pound, smallest, just under a pound and a half. So I'm hoping I'm going to tip about 18 or 19 pound on the scales and see where that gets me. Let's say I need a lake win and I need to first of all win my section and then I need a lake win with some uh, weight advantage to help me going into the last round in December. Um, Giff is a space or two above me in the league, however he's 
He's had two bream, I believe. So that could get him second in the section. So he's not really dropping many points off me if I do manage to pick the section up. Um, but, you know, it's a plus side. It's on the up. Let's hope this goes round now. We can have another one. But still, someone can catch two bream now. You're good uns and you might already have a couple of fish like, you know, Gif. Gif's admitting to £7. If he has two £5 bream now, it puts him £17, so he will be close on the scales. But just slowly packing up now, and uh, we'll see you when I'm at the way in. Yeah, I couldn't believe it. You were blanking at one point. Hello, hello, sir. You ain't got blank blank again. All right. <laughs> are you recording now? In. Oh, He's gonna, are you it. actually recording? Oh, yeah, yeah. You didn't yeah. answer my phone. Yeah, you cool. Oh, Jesus. Oh. They are down here. I told you they were down here, right? Yeah, down here. To be honest, it surprised me this morning. Three kilo. <laughs> <laughs> Not touching a leg now, is it? It's eight kilo. Eight, eight kilo, kilo three hundred and twenty grams. I've already shook you around. Have a look. Yeah. 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 Hey boys, thank you. Peace. Money's time. Section A with three kilos. Pete Mills. Hold on, Pete. Where is he? Still there, is he? Right, okay. I'll come back that one in a minute. What's that? Section B. Right, section B with three kilo four hundred and seventy. Kev Perry. Whee! Hello, Kev. Hello, mate. <laughs> right, section C. How many? Quadruple. By quadruple <laughs> default. <laughs> Trevor Holmes, one kilo, one ninety. Well, well done, Trevor. Yeah, yeah, well, fucking expensive well, diesel. Mate. Well done, Mocker. Well done, right then. Third overall, Adam Rich with three kilo, five seventy. Well Adam. Where well is done. He? Adam. Adam. Nobody there. That's yours. Ah, oh, he's still coming down. All right, come back that one. And second overall. <laughs> With three kilos, nine seventy. Draw bag, get. Hey! Was you on an end peg, was you? Yep. <laughs> right, and for the overall winner, as always. With eight kilo three twenty, Dave Ely. Thank you, Dave. Yay. The Welsh former. Thanks, well done, mate. Well done, Adam. Mocker. Adam. How do you catch him, Dave? On conventional long, mate. Just fishing for bites. Um, obviously, you'll see on this video at the end um, how we've gone for the day, and uh, I think it's pretty good. It worked out well. So uh, on to the next one now. Try and pick some more points up on the next uh, round and see where I come on the table then. Thanks, guys.